Hi, and welcome back to Swedish Plant Guys. Now, on our channel, we make videos to help you take care of all of your plants, both indoors and outdoors. And we get a ton of questions from you subscribers, which is so much fun. Thank you. We promise you we read all of them. And then, because we don't have the time to answer you in writing, because that takes a lot of time, so we take the questions, we try and bundle them together and make Q&A videos like this one to be able to answer as many questions as possible. Now in the description below you have which, which, which questions will be answered today. And if your question was similar, then you might know that your question will also be answered in that question. So check the description below and the timestamps as well. Now, if you haven't made a question for us, you can also check to see if there is a topic that you're interested in so you can get a lot of new information on that topic. And as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do and hit that bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. Now, we like the thumbs up as well and leave comments if you have questions you want us to answer in Q&As like this. Now starting off with question number one. And this is concerning our all you need to know about the CC plant video. Would this plant do well in terracotta or would it eventually break out of the pot? First of all, CC plant, as I say in that video, likes to live in a constrained environment. You should have a small pot that is, so that the roots live very constrained. Um, but it would love a terracotta pot because the terracotta passes air through it, through the walls of it. It actually breathes a little bit, which is perfect for any type of plant. So almost any plant likes to be in a terracotta pot. However, the terracotta can break quite easily, which means that eventually the roots of a CC plant will become so thick and so hard that it will break the terracotta pot. So if you plant it in a terracotta, make sure to check regularly so that it won't break the pot. And usually, if you, if you, even if you have a terracotta pot that has this type of a shape, a little V-type shape, what actually happens is that eventually you can see that the whole plant is starting to move upwards in the pot because the roots are pressing on the sides of the walls and it's actually pressing it upwards. When you see that happen, then you know it's time to repot it in a little bit bigger pot. But if you have a terracotta pot that maybe is round or something and you can't see this, make sure to repot it at a regular basis because eventually it will break the pot. Moving on to question number two, and this is concerning our all you need to know about the ficus lorata or the fiddle leaf fig video. Does liquid dishwashing liquid get rid of the mites? Now, we say in that video that one of the pests that can attack your ficus lorata is mites. And mites are a type of pest that actually bites into the plant. Uh, a lot of the pests that we have is that type of Pest. It bites into the leaf and it tries to get all of those sugars and starches to feed on that. Now to be able to do that, since it's biting all the time on the plant, um, it actually breathes through a type of gill. It, it, it breathes through the scales of the body of the mite. So what happens here is that when you add, when you mix liquid dishwasher with water and spray that on the plant, or if you spray some neem oil or other type of oil on the plant, what happens is that when that comes in contact with the mites, they can't breathe. It's the same way with oil as with the dishwashing liquid. They can't breathe, so they have to let go because they will die. And when they let go, they are all in that 
oil or that dishwashing liquid and they eventually die. However, the liquid dishwashing mixed with water there will not kill the eggs. That is why you have to go back one week later or two weeks later, you have to do it over again because you've killed all the mites that were on the plant, but now the eggs have hatched and you have new mites. So when you go over the plant one more time, you will hopefully get all of the mites. So that is why we do this a couple of times and not just one time. Question number three. And this is concerning also our all you need to know about the fiddle leaf fig video. Should I avoid buying all tropical plants in fall or winter or just the fiddle leaf fig? Good question here. I say in that video that uh, I recommend you to buy the fiddle leaf fig during spring, summer or even autumn and not during the winter months. And that has uh, different meanings from it. Uh, one, of the, one of them is that it's very easy to get cold damage on the fiddle leaf fig. And another is that this actually grows quite differently in the greenhouse. Um, if you buy a fiddle leaf fig that has been standing all summer in the greenhouse, it will have had a lot of light, high humidity, a lot of nutrients from the grower as well. It has had all of those things that it wants, that it needs, which means that the plant will be thick, lush, perfect. However, if you buy a plant that has been standing uh, in winter time in the greenhouse, even if it's in the greenhouse, it won't have the same amount of light. It won't have the same amount of heat or same amount of humidity as it would have had during summer. So the plant will be a little bit thinner. It will not be as lush and it will not have the same energy stored within it that it would have had if it grown in the, uh, during the summer or spring time. That is why if you can wait, I would buy a tropical plant, all the tropical plants during spring, summer or autumn and not during the winter. Now usually a plant stands about 8 to 16 weeks in the greenhouse, depending on which type of plant it is because it grows di quite differently uh, in the greenhouse, but between eight weeks and 16 weeks, it will be in the greenhouse and then it will go out to the shops and you will buy it. So if it stands in the greenhouse during the winter time, there is a likelihood that the plant will be a little bit weaker. That is why I say I would recommend to buy the fiddle leaf fig, not during winter time. Question number four, and this is concerning all you need to know about the Monstera deliciosa video. I live in Canada and I was wondering if you could put a humidifier near the plant. I was also wondering if damaged leaves should be removed. Now th this is two questions. So the first one, in that video I say that the Monstera lo loves to be in a hu humid spot. It likes that. So if you get very dry uh, indoors during winter time, you could try and do something about that. Now one thing is definitely to put a humidifier next to the plant, but if you do that, make sure to check the plant regularly to see that it doesn't react to too much, too humid, or that something happens to it. So it should be a very good thing, but make sure to check the plant regularly to see how it re reacts to that humi humidifier. Um, and the other question was, uh, what should I do with damaged leaves? Should they be removed? Well, it depends on the damage. If you have a leaf that is a little bit split and not split like the fenestrations on the Monstera, but it has a tore on it, uh, that really doesn't matter much to the plant, but it might matter to you if it doesn't look as well as you want it to look. 
So this is completely up to you because that plant is, that, that leaf is still photosynthesizing. So I would leave it on if you can accept that you have a leaf with a damage on it. Same way if you have a leaf that has a little bit of brown edges on it or maybe a brown spot in the middle or something. It, it doesn't look that nice, but that leaf is still photosynthesizing. It's still helping the plant to become better, healthier, stronger. So if you can live with it, keep it on the plant. But if not, you can remove it. And you don't hurt the plant by removing one or two leaves. But it would be even stronger if it had more sun panels to be able to photosynthesize. So it's completely up to you. Question number five. And this is concerning our video, all you need to know about the CC plant. I have a pretty old CC plant and it grows fast. The stems stand up and then tip over. Is this normal? Uh, or should I replant it and put the stems deeper in the soil? Or do I need to add support to the plant? The plant is otherwise happy and keeps on shooting out new stems. Okay, this is very, very common concerning the CZ plant. As the CZ plant gets older, it will become fuller, lusher, it, there will be less room for each stem. So just by that, it will be start to move out of, it will start to move outwards because you have it so dense in here. But also you have another thing here. Optimum for this plant is actually to have cooler in the night. So, it, it, because when, when it lives, where it lives usually, it gets a little bit cooler at night, then it gets hotter in the day, cooler at night, and so on. But when you have this in your home, that doesn't happen. You have the same, the same temperature all, all day, almost all year round. What, what actually differs is the humidity you have indoors, which goes down a little bit in wintertime. But when it doesn't get that cold nights and warm days, cold nights and warm days, it actually grows a little bit faster than the plant wants to. Which means that it becomes a little bit longer than it should have been if it gotten that cold in the evenings. It comes a little bit thinner as well. And what happens then is that it becomes a little bit gangly. It, it wants to tip over a little bit. This is really, really normal. Nothing to worry about. And you should never put the stems deeper into the soil because that will kill the plant. You should keep them where you have them. But you don't have to worry about this because it, it is normal. It's just something that happens because of the climate you have inside of your home. Um, but you can cut them off. If you have stems that are too long and hanging out too much from the pot, cut them off and cut them off all the way down to the soil bit here. That won't hurt the plant as well. It will just keep on shooting out new, new stems. Now, there was also a little added question here, or do I need to add support to the plant? You, you can support the stems if you want to, but you don't need to. The, the CC plant works that out by itself. But if, if you don't want it to become very bushy and very wide, you could support it by using some, some type of uh, metal wire or something. Uh, that's fine as well. It won't affect the plant anything. Question number six. My fiddle leaf fig has been in my house for two years. I believe all the conditions are grow, uh, for growth are ideal and the placement is very good. However, the plant has not dropped or added one new leaf in two years. Am I missing something? This is also a very, very common question. Now, the fiddle leaf fig, as same as the CZ plant, can grow very fast when it grows but then it can have a very long rest after that and it can be up to two or three or even four years before you get any new leaves this is not because you have done something wrong this is just the plant's way of saying 
I have enough energy to be alive, to be well, but not as much as I want to add something. That is why it's, it goes a little bit dormant. It doesn't send out any new leaves. This is nothing to worry about, because if you just keep on giving it what it wants, you keep on fertilizing it during the spring and summer months uh, or autumn, uh, just keep on watering as you do, eventually it will start to shoot new leaves. And when it does, it's telling you, now I have enough to be well and add. I have enough to keep on growing and giving you new leaves. So as long as the plant is not, if you, if you can't see that anything is wrong with the plant, don't do anything different. Don't try and force it to grow again. Just keep on doing what you're doing and you will get rewarded later on. So just keep on giving that plant what it needs. And when it's ready, you will get new growth. Question number seven, and this is concerning our three easy ways to propagate the CC plant. The leaf cuttings look pretty packed in that glass. When they start developing tubers and roots, do they need more space in the glass? Perfect. This is something that we did not add in the video. So a very good question. Now I actually have those here and I think that there was the leaf cuttings that is referenced here. And I have them here. I still have them. I think it's almost four weeks ago now that we uh, put these into water in that video. And this is what it looks like. I'll take up a few of them and show you. Now during that four weeks, which is a complete month, this is the only thing that has happened. We have started to develop a small, small root here. And also, if you can see that from the cut, it's starting to bulge a little bit. It's rounded. And that is the tuber that is starting to begin to develop. Now, over four weeks, this is all that, it has, that has happened. But your concern here was if they were too close together. None of the leaves are turning yellow. All of the leaves are starting to develop small tubers. Some of the leaves are longer than others and so on. But all of them is well. But yes, when you have started, when you have a complete little bulb here, when you have a tuber that has started to grow out a little bit of roots from it, then yes, separate them and put them individually in a glass so that it has the room to grow. Because if we have them this tightly packed, some of them will probably not make it. So yes. Perfect question, and yes, do that. Now, I would like to also show you the stems. We took stem cuttings as well from that video. So these are all also a month old here. Now, this is what has happened from the stem cuttings. Almost nothing. No roots, no tubers uh, starting to form, nothing. But I think that it will take at least one, two, maybe three months more before we see something here. However, it's still green. It's still lush. You can see that it's feeling well. So we just keep on doing what we're doing. We exchange the water as often as we can. We put it in a light spot without sunlight. Uh, and then we wait. This is just a waiting game. And, uh, but it will come. I also have the cutting from the video we made on how to make a cutting from the Monstera Deliciosa, uh, the Swiss cheese plant. Uh, and here it's happened quite a lot. Now this is, I think, three weeks we put the, since we put this in water. And what has happened here is that the air root that we had in the water here has actually become now a water root. It has transitioned from being an air root to being a water root. And you can also see here that you have 
small new roots coming out from the water root as well. So this is thriving. This is exactly what we wanted to see. Uh, and what I expect on the next month or so is that if there will also come from the node here, you will also get a few new roots growing here. So you will get roots from the air root, which is now a, basically a water root, and you will also get roots from the node. The leaves, everything still looks good, so it's just keep on doing what we're doing, exchange the water, put it in a light spot without direct sunlight. Okay, question number eight. I've made a few self-watering planters as described in your earlier videos. I've made mine using a liner pot that I fill with pumice and wick into a larger pot beneath that is filled with water up to the bottom of the liner. Perfect, that is exactly how we describe it. Now roots have grown from the liner pot down into the water reservoir. The plant looks very healthy and is growing. My question, is it okay for roots to grow into the water reservoir? And if so, what should they look like? Is it okay for them to turn brown or black? Or should they be white? Will the roots die during the periods when the reservoir is dry? All of these very good questions. Now, this is exactly what will happen in a self-watering system. Since you have holes in the liner part of your system, the there will be roots that will go directly down into the water. And you want this. The, the plant will form something we call water roots. And those roots doesn't need to look like normal roots. Normal roots in soil, yes, often we like them to be white, a little bit yellow perhaps, or you can see that they are healthy. However, water roots can look quite different. I have a Hoya here that has been standing in a self-watering container for over 10 years. I have never repotted this. It has been in this pot for 10 years. So when I take this up, you can see here that it has a lot of roots. And all of these roots here are water roots. They live completely submerged in water. Now, I have let this plant dry out completely. The water, it hasn't give, been given water for a very long time. To be able to show you here, because the roots from the beginning, when, they, when there was water here, the roots here were dark brown, almost black which is usually how a water root looks like in water. But since it has dried out, you can see that when that water root dries, it actually becomes a little bit light brown or a little yellowish in tone. It almost looks more like a root you would find in soil or in pumice. Uh, but as you can see, the plant is fine. Uh, what will happen here is that when I add water again, the water roots will kick along again. It will start to continue dragging up water to the plant. They haven't died just because this has dried out. You'd never have to be concerned about that. I would be concerned if I let it dry out, say for a couple of a month or two, that it gotten really, really dry, then these roots could die. But since these have been dry only for, I think, one or two weeks now, they will still work as I add water to that system. Uh, so, of course, they can die eventually, but they are not dead now. So, to answer your question here, should they be white? No. They, if they are in water, they will probably be dark brown or black. If they are standing somewhere where they have been drying out a little bit, they will look like this. But they are not dead because they change color. And also, as you can see here, the Hoya is one of the plants that we say likes to dry out in between watering. Now, how does that work in a self-watering system where you have water all the time? If you have water down here in the reservoir all the time, they, they will be wicked up and you will have a little bit of moisture here in the soil 
and you will have water roots that are completely soaked in water. How does that work? Because this wants to dry out in between watering. Well, you have to consider why do we say that? Why do we say that it wants to dry out in between watering? Well, it's because the roots of the Hoya and succulent plants as well, if they stand in too wet soil, they will not get as much air as they want for those roots. The roots are sensitive in that way. They need that perfect balance of water and oxygen all the time. One way to get that is to, to uh, plant this in a pumice mix. Pumice and clay and long-term nutrients. Uh, however, what happens in a self-watering system is that you almost get the same as you do outside in nature. When it rains a lot in nature, let's say succulents. Succulents live in places where it rarely, rarely rains. But when it does, it rains cats and dogs. Why doesn't the plant die then? Well, it's because it gets moist and wet around the roots, but then the water goes down to the um, uh, groundwater and goes away. Same system here. It's the same in this, uh, this type of systems. When we water this plant, yes, the roots get moist, but you have holes here in the bottom. So the access water goes down in the reservoir, which means that the roots always have the right amount of water. Water isn't bad. It's just that it wants water and oxygen at the same time. And you will get that by the drainage holes here. And then the plant sends out water roots completely submerged in the water down here. Now those roots are different. They don't need all that air. The plant gets the air from the roots within the soil and a lot of the water it needs from the water roots. So these systems work perfectly for plants that we say wants to dry out. Now what I usually do in a self-watering system like this is what I've done here. Now and then, now and again, I just stop watering for, for a little bit. Make it dry out completely for a little while and then I add water again for a couple of months and then I let it dry out a little bit again and so on which works perfectly you can't get it any easier than that question number nine and this is concerning our all you need to know about self-watering systems in pots can you use an organic fabric like cotton or does it have to be a synthetic fiber now this is concerning what we use to wick up the water from the water reservoir to the liner where you have planted the plant. Uh, uh, now I say there, we often use some form of microfiber cloth used for cleaning, which is synthetic. Can you use cotton instead? Yes, you can, because cotton also wicks water very good. However, we have found that over time, if you have a system that you know is going to be for a very long period of time, cotton actually stops working after a couple of years. Or at least it doesn't work as well as a synthetic made fiber cloth. That is why we use the synthetic one and not a cotton one. Yes, it works fine with cotton. However, over a long period of time, cotton actually stops working or it doesn't work as good as a synthetic one. Question number 10. This is concerning our Q&A video a cutting from a Dracaena. Hi, I have a Dracaena studneri for four years. Recently, it started making all of its leaves dry from down to up. And then, and even when I changed the soil, the situation didn't change. I figured out that lots of, it, lots of the roots have rotten and dry, died or dried. Uh, can I just cut the stems and put them into water and root and save my plant? Now, the Dracaena has, doesn't have a very extensive root system. It's actually quite small concerning how many leaves and how much foliage you have on a plant. There is quite little roots for a Dracaena. 
So it's quite easy for this to happen, that something happens to the roots, they dry out or they get some type of fungus or something and a lot of the roots die. What happens is that you see that all of the leaves are just starting to die and they die from the bottom up when something happens to the roots. So you have a correct here guess that something has happened to the roots. That is probably what happened. Now, can you just cut the stems and make a new Dharsemina? Yes, you can. But the quicker you are, the better. Because what happens when the foliage starts to die from the, the, the oldest foliage up to the new leaves? What is actually happening is that it's draining all of the stored nutrients inside of the plant. So it's losing leaves as it goes. So the quicker you are by making that cut, taking that cutting and doing exactly what we tell you in that video, the more likely you are to have a high success rate in creating a new plant. So don't wait too long for this. Make the cut and try and make a new plant out of that one. Now you could try also, when you've made that cut and made that cutting, try and revive your Dacena because it can produce new roots. So it's not over until it's over. Just try it. Question number 11, and this is concerning all you need to know about pumice or volcanic rock. Could you please tell us when we have to rewater the plant? I use pumice today for my plant without the microfiber cloth. This is so hard. I really want to tell you exactly when to rewater. And this is the same in soil as in pumice. It's very difficult for me to tell you exactly when to rewater because this is completely up to which type of plant you have, what size of container you have. There are so many factors in this, so I can't tell you to, you have to rewater re every week. And then you have where you live. We live in Sweden. Uh, I'm guessing that you are not living in Sweden. You could be living in Thailand where you have a completely different humidity at home. You have a completely warmer climate than you have here. So if I tell you to water one way, it wouldn't work in Sweden. So, so I couldn't tell you exactly how. But I have a small tip for you that might be able to help you. Because pumice has a color to it. When it's completely dry, when it's bone dry, it's very almost white. It's light, light gray, but almost white. But when it gets wet, you can see that it changes color. It changes color to darker form of gray or even a slight brown color to it. So that is one way you can tell when it's starting to dry up. Now, pumice can actually wick water, at least the pumice we use, because this is depending on the corn sizes you use of the pumice, but it can wick water at least 40 centimeters in a pot. So if you have a big pot, it can wick water all the way up to, to the top. But one way to look at the pumice is to see the color of it. When the pumice starts to turn white or starts to turn light, light gray, then you know, okay, the top portion is starting to dry out and then you will probably have a, a gradient of how much water there is in the pumice to the bottom of the pot. So if you have a very dry over portion of pumice, you know that, okay, it's dry maybe one, two inches down in, into the pumice, then maybe it's time to water again. So you look at the color of the pumice. That is one tip I can, go, I can give you, but I can't tell you exactly how much to give. Another way is, of course, that you, when you plant in pumice, you add a uh, water level indicator. Now we have a video uh, that tells you exactly how to create one yourself. It's quite easy, anybody can do it. So go and watch that video and put down a water level indicator in your pot, which tells you exactly how much water you have in there. Question number 12. This is concerning our cutting from a Monstera Deliciosa. Uh, where should we place the cutting in terms of sunlight and temperature? 
Good question, because we actually missed this one in that video. I have the cutting here that we made from uh, that video. It's actually started to produce some roots and uh, it's feeling quite healthy. Uh, you should put, and this is concerning almost all types of cuttings. When you've made a cutting, placed it in water, always think to place it somewhere where it's very light, but no direct sunlight. So light and quite warm, but no direct sunlight. Because if the direct sunlight hits the leaves here, this will stress the plant and it will have to deal with that heat and that stress rather than producing roots down here. So put it in a light spot so that it can photosynthesize, but not in direct sunlight. Uh, and also, if, if you do this in winter time, make sure that you don't place this directly above a radiator where you can get a lot of dry, warm heat because that will also stress the plant. So uh, move it away from that radiator a little bit, but still give it a lot of light. So that was all we had for this Q&A video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up share with your friends as well and if you're not a subscriber please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new now thanks a lot for watching this video thank you a lot for all the questions just keep them coming we read all of them and we try to answer as many of them in these q a videos as possible so until next time i don't